How's it going guys? So the day has come, it's finally time for me to teach you how to make some body armor. So I'm not going to teach you how to make each piece of armor that I've made specifically, but I will teach you the method that I use to make all of them. Because even though they all look really different from each other, they're all essentially the same thing. It's just attaching plates to a base. In Homemade Weapons Part 2, I used like a duffel bag or something. In Homemade Weapons Part 3, I used a leather jacket. In Part 4, I used some motorcycle padding. And for this one, I'm going to be using this plastic bag right here. Uh, well, now that I think about it, I bet I could actually use this thing. So I'm going to be using this motorcycle padding. I got it on eBay for like $40. Not that bad of a deal. So the first step is reinforcement. The better your base is put together, the tougher the armor is going to be once it's finished. So points of focus are going to be things like these little elastic straps that just aren't very much. And then zippers, anything like this, these little side release buckles that can be really high quality, but in this case for this whole thing costing $40, the buckles aren't very high quality. Like as soon as you put the armor on, these things are already sliding out. It's not very good and points like this where these plates are just not held together by very much. Uh, the thing that we're going to be using to reinforce this armor is these uh, locking tie down things, specifically the nylon webbing that they use. And for this project in particular, I'm going to be removing the elbow pad and the forearm padding just because I want the option to make my own gauntlets and bracers and stuff. So to prepare a section of nylon webbing, just cut off however much you need. Then once it's cut, you'll see that these threads are starting to come out of it. So what you gotta do is take a lighter and just melt the end of this and that'll keep it from fraying. You can see here how I've removed that little side release buckle and I've just attached the nylon webbing directly to this part of the padding right here using a rivet and a couple of fender washers. The way you do that is you take your little section of nylon webbing that you have and you're going to take one rivet that you are going to establish that you're not really going to be able to use afterwards and you put the nylon webbing down you take the rivet hold it with some pliers or something heat it up over the stove till it gets really really hot and then punch a hole through both ends of the nylon webbing the reason we use a hot rivet to punch through the webbing is so that it'll be the perfect size once you actually have to put the rivet you're going to use through it. But if you have like a steel rod that is the same diameter as the rivet, go ahead and use that. Now to attach the nylon webbing to stuff like this, you just have to take your rivet, take a fender washer, put it on the rivet, then put the rivet through a hole that you make in whatever it is that you're trying to attach the nylon webbing to. And then once the rivet's through a piece of the padding or whatever it is you're trying to attach the nylon webbing to, then take the webbing, put it over the rivet, then take the other fender washer and put it on top of the webbing. And then from there, just pop the rivet and then all of the stuff that you're connecting is gonna get sandwiched in between the two fender washers washers and it'll stay together really really well. So I've reinforced all the points that I can at this stage. Now I'm going to start attaching all the plates and I'm going to start on the back just because. One thing I really like about this motorcycle armor is that it has this really cool looking spine protector and the bottom pivots in case you're into twerking. And here's a creativeness tip. Work with what you have. I've got this really cool looking spine protector with all these different pieces of plastic and what I can do is cut out a big giant plate of aluminum and lay it across the whole thing and cover this all up but instead of that what I'm gonna do is cut out multiple pieces of aluminum but instead of having them like this they're gonna be overlapping each other so you get that really cool samurai effect because taking time on the things that you make is really key that was my problem when I was younger if I spent like an hour and a half in the workshop it's not that I would get bored but I would just get lazy and I'd be like nah I'm gonna go play Xbox and just like leave and I would leave my project and I, I knew that I was that way so what I would end up doing is I would rush through all my projects because I didn't want to get bored and leave them unfinished. But if you just slow down and accept the fact that your project might take a few days, it's gonna turn out way better, even if it's like a few weeks. If you're gonna build a suit of armor, put some time into it. It'll look really, really cool. It'll look a lot better than it will if you just rush through it. So unlike the riot shield, which had to be made out of aluminum because making it out of steel would make it way too heavy, body armor is perfectly fine to be made out of steel. But I'm still gonna be using aluminum just because I have a bunch of it. But, but if you're gonna be using steel, make sure you use an angle grinder with a cutoff wheel instead of a jigsaw. It'll just make everything go way smoother. So I've cut out all the plates and I've painted them flat black. Now I'm attaching them to the plates that were already on the armor when I first got it. 
You push the rivet through a hole that you've drilled through the motorcycle armor and through the plate that you just cut out. And now with the rivet poking out through right there, then you just take your plate, put the rivet through the hole right there. Then you just pop that rivet and then do the exact same thing on that side and then your plate is attached. If you're doing this overlapping type of method that I did right here, you're gonna wanna start with the bottom plate and move upwards. So this is what the back of it looks like so far. You can see that the plates overlap each other. This helps to absorb impact from high impact weapons like baseball bats and clubs and basically anything that has a lot of weight behind it. So now let's go over the shoulder piece. Typically in video games and movies and stuff, when you see characters that have a big shoulder on one side and then on the other side they got this little baby shoulder, it's usually the right shoulder that's all huge. And I guess the mentality behind that is that if you've got a shield in your left arm, then that's all the protection that your left side needs. And then you want as much armor on the right side as possible because that's the arm that's holding your uh, weapon and you gotta protect it. Um, but personally, if I've got a shield in my left hand and I'm leaning forward, left side forward to protect myself from my enemy, I'm gonna want my left side to be like a tank. And then I want my right arm to be as light as possible so that I can defend myself like this and then as soon as they strike my armor or my shield, or if they miss, then I can just capitalize on that and strike as quickly as possible because my arm isn't weighed down by armor. And then I can just get right back behind my defense. So it's all a matter of preference, just like pretty much every single video that I've ever made. But for this particular suit of armor, I'm going big shoulder on the left side and light armor on the right side. Now as for the construction of the shoulder piece, it's made in almost the exact same way as the back piece. The only difference is not all of the plates are attached directly to the base. This plate is attached directly to the base. It's attached to this piece that's on this side, but then this middle plate right here isn't attached to the base. It uses some of these nylon straps and the thing that I taught you up here, this rivet and fender washer thing, it uses that to attach the straps to this plate and then the other end of the strap goes to this plate. So these two plates are connected to each other. This one is not attached to the base. And then this one down here, however, is attached to the base. This uh, padding thing right here with this elastic strip, and then this uses one strap to attach this plate to this plate. And that's really it, it's really that simple. And here's how it looks on the underside in case you're curious or confused. Here's that big plate which is attached to the shoulder piece, and then this middle plate right here which is attached to the big plate with these two straps right here. And then this smaller plate right here which is attached to this pad and then you can't really see it, it's kind of buried under there, but there's that little blue strap in there that is attaching this little plate to this medium sized plate. Uh, so hopefully that cleared some stuff up. So here are the plates for the front of the armor. If you're wondering why they're all scratched up, it's because the first time I cut them out, I did it completely wrong. Uh, you couldn't even reach forward without scratching your arms up on the sides of the plates. So I had to take them off of the base again and I had to recut them and cut the sides and stuff and then re-smooth out the sides and now I'm gonna have to repaint it. Uh, so in a weird way, this should kind of comfort you guys that are just starting out because I've been doing this stuff for years and I don't get everything right the first time. So if you want to start making stuff but you're afraid that you're gonna mess up, Take comfort in the fact that you are probably gonna mess up, uh, but every single time you mess up, just remember that you're that much closer to being an expert. I'm not an expert, but I'm on my way, and that feels good, and I want you guys to feel good, so go mess up. And so here's how the plates are gonna connect to each other and to the base. These two little holes right here are gonna use a nylon strap to attach these two plates to each other. Same thing here, 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 and here. All of these uh, plates that are parallel to each other are going to be connected to each other. So I flipped the pieces over so you can see how simple it is to attach the parallel plates to each other. Now from here, what you're gonna start doing is stacking up all the plates on each other like this. And once you've got them all stacked up, you're going to take your measurements for how long the nylon strap going across these holes is going to have to be. And you're going to take the measurements for where the holes in the nylon strap are going to be as well. It's going to be four total nylon straps to go across all these holes. So according to the measurements, I've come up with four six inch long straps that have holes an inch and a half away from each other. Now I'm going to start riveting the straps onto the plates. Here's how it looks with all the straps riveted on. 
here's how it looks on the other side. So from here, I've got these two holes drilled right here. I'm going to take a nylon strap, put it across right there, then take that articulated plate that we just made, put it on there so that these two holes line up with that one, and then take this other top plate and put it on top of there, and then put a couple of really long rivets through that and attach these plates to the base. And in case you're wondering, yes, this will completely remove the functionality of the zipper. That's why remove the zipper altogether, but you're still going to be able to put it on. You just got to put it on like a pullover instead of like a jacket. And sorry guys, I forgot to record how to do the right shoulder, but luckily it could not be simpler. It's just a whole bunch of fender washers riveted onto a piece of leather, and then the upper shoulder plate right there is done in the exact same way as the left shoulder. That's all. So then after you've attached this main plate to it, just throw it on over a regular leather jacket and you've got yourself a freaking sweet suit of armor. Um, I wouldn't really consider this thing finished yet. Uh, there's still some stuff that I want to add to it, but over the course of this video I've shown you everything that you need to know to make any of the armors that you've seen in any of my videos. If this was the armor that you were asking about, that you wanted me to show you how to make, it's the exact same thing as this. It's just these plates getting cut out of whatever material you want and then riveting it onto this base, which is just some motorcycle padding. It's the exact same thing as this. So anyways guys, it's 2.30 a.m. Uh, for the last three days from the time I've woken up to the time I've gone back to bed. I've just been working on this video. Uh, I had a friend over yesterday uh, to lend a helping hand, uh, just putting this whole thing together. And I can't tell you how much fun I have making these videos. This stuff, I, I never get tired of making this kind of stuff, and I never get tired of making videos for you guys and seeing all of like the positive comments and just how much you guys appreciate the videos. I just kind of wanted to reassure you guys that nothing has changed. I, I will be a professional YouTuber one day, and I'm going to have you guys to thank for it. So if you want to see that happen, just remember to like the video, share it with as many people as you can. Um, I, I really gotta go to bed. I've got to get up at 8 tomorrow and drive to St. Louis because I've got a conference going on there. But I just got a laptop, so I'm just gonna upload this footage to my laptop and then I'm gonna edit it on the way there. I'll, I'll try to get my brother to drive, whatever. Um, yeah, guys, thank you so much for everything that you've done. Uh, I'll talk to you later, bye.